All right, welcome to the course Electrical Systems in Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering. This is Ian Carlo Lasitano. Uh, you can reach me via my uh, email on the screen. Uh, I am Lasitano at ideationbuilds.com. Um, my, my website is also available. Uh, my, my, my other contact details are available in my website. Now, let's start with the topic on a bit of a history of um of it's not working so it, it's a bit of a history of the uh topic of electricity and again when we say when we say history it's about it's it's, it's a bit of an of a hindsight because uh this this concepts or the, the the overall picture is uh, the intertwining of different storylines so we have people and significant events uh, laid out uh, certainly we're going to miss a lot of them okay of these events and people but as long as uh, as far as the as far as the 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 topic of uh, the topic of electricity is concerned uh, electrical systems in the field of agricultural and biosystems engineering is concerned, these are all that matters. So we have here the uh, first, okay, the first moving picture of an edit one. Uh, more than a century since harnessing the electricity, okay, the power of electricity to, to light up and to, to, to industrialize our cities and industries okay? we finally have the physical evidence of the phenomenon of uh, electromagnetism so this electron okay uh, has been the fascination of of our, our um, physicists uh, for a long time say from back when the day when Thales okay Thales uh, he was a Greek philosopher and he first observed the attraction of amber with a piece of cloth. Uh, we can replicate this, this uh, experiment. And so etymologically, we have the word electricity coming from the Greek word electron, which means uh, amber. Now, there have been uh, developments in the field of electromagnetic physics between 600 BC and the 1600s, and more so afterwards than what is shown, uh, will be shown. So herein are the most significant discoveries and findings through the centuries in relation to the, to the course, okay? After Thales, we have uh, the electrical conductivity experiments of uh, the English scientist uh, Stephen Gray, okay? But while he is regarded the, the father of electricity, he supposed that uh, electric charges dependent on the dependent on the color of the material, which was later debunked by the French chemist Charles Devay. Now Devay is uh, credited for differentiating conductors and inductors. In the 1700s, the American uh, Benjamin Franklin, the Englishman Joseph Priestley, and then uh we have also henry cavendish okay also uh, another englishman they individually discovered of the uh, the concept of the coulomb's law uh, well it, it, it's later named after charles uh, charles coulomb but they were the ones who who uh who discovered it okay franklin is also known for his kite flying experiment uh, the widely known experiment, okay? And while he's not the only one to do the famous experiment, okay, he was able to survive it, okay? And write it in a scholarly paper. In fact, others have, have perished uh, in, in those kinds of experiments. So we'll be not doing that, okay? Uh, despite knowing that single bolt of, uh, or a single flash of lightning can reach a billion volts and that would already uh, suffice if we can store that uh, in a, a 
certain battery storage or any 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 energy storage device that could supply the needs of 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 our industries of our entire economy of of a human economy in mean, the world over for a very long time okay. uh, i think you've heard the mantra uh, think big start small okay uh, we could not still uh, harness the lightning or the electricity that it has and simply because we have none of that okay, no technology to harness it and also well well uh we we could okay in in some ways the lightning arresters could attract the the electricity but we have no way of storing that uh, electricity so it just dissipates it onto the ground okay so um we're talking about the batteries already and uh, the start of of the uh, revolutionary uh, story behind the use of electricity in our our the lives is with the uh, batteries of Alessandro Volta, who first invented the the, the battery, okay, which was or can contain six point six volts, okay. So it's called the voltaic pile, okay. So in a voltaic pile. And in the late 1700s, uh, inventions such as this, the first solenoid and the uh, electrical telegraph by the French Ampere, okay? It was a, a, a development. So there were also uh, theories that advanced uh, with this new works, okay, developments, patents, uh, inventions. So in the late 1800s, Coulomb, Coulomb finalized okay, the law that uh, Benjamin Franklin and the two Englishmen, uh, Christie and Cavendish, discovered. So that's why it is now named after him. All right, so once we, um, okay, so we have Andre, Andre Marie Ampere and we also have the Charles Coulomb. Okay, so once we have this, okay, as our, our starting point for our development, we now move on to the more uh, grander scale or the, the bigger scale of the use of electricity in our society. And we move to the what? To the more recent history. Okay, we have, well, we have Volta again, we go back to the use of this battery. And we have Hippolyte Pixie who produced the first, okay, alternating current via the dynamo. So there's more to the history, okay, as you will go along and we'll be injecting that in our discussions. And since we have now uh, different technologies, Okay, advancing electricity. We come to a point where uh, there is now the development of what's called the uh, bigger industry sized electricity power by uh, Edison, who was proposing to the American public or to, and even to the American government and the public through his company, General Electric to create power stations for street and house lighting. Now, the DC is further uh, uh, given, okay, given the uh, widespread attention when, okay, uh, Nikola Tesla, he, he proposes a different kind of uh, technology by uh, what is called alternating current. And he is backed and funded by the American entrepreneur and engineer, George Westinghouse, uh, with his Westinghouse Electric Corporation. So again, the differences between DC and AC are, are very much highlighted in, in their uh, properties, okay, which can be seen on the graph uh, figure, point, uh, figure two. So we have a direct current and the alternating current. And we see the 
property of the direct current to be on a linear uh, chart, okay, linear graph, while that of alternating is in a sinusoidal uh, way. But this uh, property lets us make use of the alternating current uh, in very long distances. Okay, so it can be distributed into in, in, in very long distances, unlike that of the direct current, which is a lot of uh, this, it has a lot of, okay, a lot of uh, voltage drop in a uh, short distance okay, compared to the alternating current. So we'll not go into detail uh, with the, the, the backstory between Edison and Tesla, but eventually we have the uh, electrical uh, alternating current electricity trumping the uh, DC. That's why we have now the AC as our main, as our main uh, supply of uh, electricity worldwide. There are a lot of uh, advantages of DC besides uh, having uh, the, the safety, okay? The safety of its users because uh, DC okay, against alternating current could not be amped up or it could not be increased, okay? it could not be transformed using a transformer, it could not be transformed in voltage. So you could not step up, okay? step it up and then step it down later. That's the problem with the DC and that's the, that's the advantage of the altern alternating. So you create a DC supply at the voltage that you produce it, but then uh, you are you are going to uh, lose a lot of voltage by by the voltage shop, uh, which is going to be discussed later in the in the course. Okay. All right. So we have an electrical circuit, and here is a uh, first a voltage or current source. Okay, and we have here a battery, and then we have a conductor. Okay, from the high, from the area of high electron concentration uh, to the area of lower concentration. And we are going to turn this, uh, the, the, the areas, okay, the low here, the, the, the high and low areas as poles. Uh, it is only through the conductor that electricity flows okay, between the poles because the, um, the, the conductors are insulated. So there is no, there's a, a potential difference between the, the poles. And if you're going to recall in the uh, concept of uh, engineering, you have the, uh, from, lower concent uh, from higher concentration, uh, the, uh, the, the, to, to achieve the equilibrium, okay, it goes down, okay? So this is now an electrical secret, okay? Well, just a representation of it, okay? Now, what are voltage and current sources? In the electrical circuit diagram, we have here a dry cell as our voltage source. There are more out there. And here are some examples okay, of voltage current sources. We have a lithium cell battery. We have a zener diode uh, and a silicon semiconductor. Uh, okay, a, it's a silicon uh, semiconductor device that permits bidirectional uh, flow of current, and we have here a wet cell. Okay, uh, that's the that wet cell is a uh, okay. A wet cell is is uh, used mo mostly in 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 um, automobile applications. Okay, we have also. The power plant as a as a source of power. Okay. Now a current source is where the current value is maintained. Thus, a current source is independent of the voltage difference across it. Now that's the difference between the voltage and current source. All right, we consider the same electrical circuit diagram in figure three. Uh, is their resistance to the wire, okay? As we can see, okay, on in, in, in table one, okay? 
uh, there is. Okay, why? Because there is a certain resistivity. When we say uh, resistance, it's the the uh, the resistance of the um, material to conduct electricity. Okay, so um, there is a degree of conductivity of a material uh, falling into a certain spectrum okay, because uh, if you recall your chemistry, we have the met metallic materials having electrons that are highly uh, excited so they can conduct electricity. So it's, it's actually the electrons transferring the, or it's the electrons moving around, okay? This, this atoms of metals that is transmitting the the electricity and it just goes that electrical conductivity is the degree of how the electrons easily flow through a material so naturally naturally all materials have a certain degree of insulation or resistivity that limits the electrical conductivity of, of the material okay this is the very reason materials physics is after superconductors to conduct electricity without or very little losses okay. so depending on the war material either for have resistance to electron flow and this has been found to be directly proportional to the uh, path length in a circuit and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire okay so in an equation form we have r equals to uh, equals the electrical conductivity and multiplied to the length of the, the wire and the area. Now, the conductivity is uh, dependent on the temperature. That's why in table one, you see, uh, we see here the uh, conductivity at a certain temperature, and that's at room temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Quite, quite. Uh, quite cold, right? So, uh, okay, this this conductivity is measured in um, ohm centimeter, so that when you multiply that by the length over the area, so multiply the, times the length, which is in units of um, so so uh, a unit of uh, resistance times length times length over the unit of length squared so else uh, r l squared over l squared so the l cancels uh the l squared cancels so we, we, we well, what remains is uh the r unit so we have the ohms left the wire or material resist resistance is likewise affected by the operating temperature as we have said now the variation is captured uh, by equation number two. And, okay. Now we have in equation number two, the conductor resistance, okay. At any temperature determined by the equation um, R sub R, which is the resistance at a specified temperature uh, multiplied by the quantity one plus okay, uh, alpha times delta T. Okay. And well, the, the uh, unit is still resistance because when you multiply that to, or when you multiply the alpha, which is one over uh, degree Celsius, to the delta T, which is in the degree Celsius, it's just cancels. So uh, we have the resistance also in ohms. Now, this brings us to the uh, concept of resistors. Okay? This, these are elements in a circuit. Uh, which create electrical resistance. 
when in a circuit the resistor shown on the screen okay they reduce the current and voltage because uh it, it it's it's against the flow of this current and voltage they also uh, are used okay, in in circuits to um, adjust the signal levels the bias active uh, circuit elements and others okay so it can also be used to terminate uh, transmission lines if there's a need to okay uh, to avoid um, hazards electrical hazards and uh, lastly it can also be used to uh, dissipate heat because the electrical resistance would produce a lot of heat okay. so these are used uh, used or they, they find uses in uh, electric motors and generators now the important thing about uh, the resistors is their resistance rating so we discussed that uh, with this topic okay so we have the industry color bands uh, of uh, rating a resistors in number one okay, we have uh, the example yellow violet orange gold now to the right is the band uh, designation the numerical value for each band so we have a yellow that's that means four the violet is a seven and you have the orange and gold. So where's the gold? All right, so uh, orange is three, okay? So that means we have four, four, seven, four to seven times 10 to the three, okay? So that is four to seven K, okay? K is representative of 10 to the three. Now the gold is representative of the 5%. So we have, okay, we have the gold, uh, meaning um, five percent. Is it correct? Uh, should be five percent, right? So gold is five percent. So this is the final uh, listing. So um, okay. So this is. Plus or minus five percent. Now number two is two point two kilo ohms. Okay, plus or minus five percent. Number three is one hundred ohms. Plus or minus five percent. Uh, number four is one point fifty kilo ohms. Plus or minus five percent. Five is four to seven ohms. Plus or minus five percent. Six is thirty nine kilo ohms. Plus or minus five percent. And we reach a, a summary table because we were just talking about the four band resistors. Now, what about the five band and the six band? Okay. So the, 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 uh, for the five band, okay, the third band is what is what? The third band now becomes the additional significant digit. So we go first to the four band. So the first, Two numbers are the significant digits, okay? And the third would be the multiplier. Uh, the fourth letter is the tolerance. And lastly, so there are no five and six bonds, so they are uh, not applicable. Uh, we have the five band now. So we have an additional third significant digit. Okay. Um, so higher, higher, higher um, uh, precision. Or accuracy, uh, accuracy in the in the uh, rating. So the multiplier and tolerance move slower. But for the sixth band, we add the sixth uh, band with a different purpose, and that's that's the temperature coefficient. Okay. Now the, the unit of the temperature coefficient is in uh, parts per million per unit temperature, which could be in Celsius or uh, Kelvin. And it can be converted to the more usable units of one over um, degrees Celsius or one over Kelvin. Okay. Now the resistance varies with temperature or material, which will be expounded on later. 
Uh, before that, take note of two of two more important rules in resistor ratings. First, okay, to determine where you must begin, read, read the first band. Okay, since it can be confusing, locate for a gold or a silver band. If one of the outer bands is either gold or silver, begin with the band in the opposite end as the first band. Number two, if there is a neither gold nor silver bands, locate the band that is nearer to the edge of the resistor. With that, okay, that should be the first band to read. Now, also take note that the black and white bands are not used to indicate tolerance. So it's another uh, indication of where to, to begin reading. Uh, now, also same with gold and silver, which are not used to uh, indicate the nominal value or the significant digits, right? Now let's proceed to the concept of the recurrent. Okay. We go back to equation two, okay? The table three now lists the temperature coefficients of resistance of different materials. Okay, using equation two given this uh, temperature coefficients of resistance, the resistance of a material can be determined uh, given the temperature variation uh, and the resistance at the given reference temperature. Okay, this is just a matter of proportion. Conversely, the temperature can be determined using same coefficient and given two resistance values. Okay, this is the basis for this. This is the basis for uh, thermometers and temperature sensors. We now proceed with uh, DC circuits and we uh, get involved with the computations of the different circuit elements. Okay. We, we now know about uh, resistors. There are three laws of importance in uh, the mathematical operations of uh, circuits. First is Ohm's law, and it states that for many materials, the potential difference through the material is proportional to the current across the or via the resistance. Okay. In equation form, okay, this is uh, V equals to IR, where V equals is in volts, and the I and current are in amperes and ohms, respectively. The other two rules are packaged as one. We have the Kirchhoff's rules, uh, law, laws. Okay, first is the the loop rule, and next is the junction rule. Now, uh, let's let's discuss uh, this two for this uh, this two in detail. Okay, so in the first this this loop rule. So, based on the energy conservation, the algebraic sum of the voltage changes around any closed loop or path in a given circuit okay equal to zero next is oh sorry we, we first get through to the equation okay, representing this one so any close to in a certain uh, circuit okay it's it totals zero now the junction rule or law is we have the algebraic sum of all current flowing into the uh, into the junction of a circuit, equaling the algebraic sums of the current flowing through it. Okay, so you have a junction. Uh, in, in the first, we have the loop. In a in, in loop, okay. In here, in the next, we have a junction. So, um, it's in. It, it's all. It's all in. Uh, additive, okay. So we have the addition of all the voltage uh, in a loop equals zero. In the next is in the junction rule, we have the the total uh, current in going through a junction is equal to the the currents flowing through all the junctions. Okay. Now we have the loop and junction rules presented by the equations. And we have now this in the circuit diagram as shown okay, in figure seven. In seven A, we have a voltage source and three resistors. Take note of the symbols, okay? The 120 volt DC voltage source causes electrons to flow 
from the negative terminal to the positive term terminal, thereby passing through the three resistors. So the loop rule states that 120 equals uh, V1, that is the voltage across R1, okay, plus V2, that is the voltage across R2, and plus V3, which is the voltage across uh, R3. Right? So that's the that's the um, in in diagram form. Now uh, we have also in in seven B the junction rule. Okay, so the the circuit also has three resistors. Okay. So we have uh, the junction um, between R1, R3, and R2. So if you have the electricity flowing through, um, so, so uh, with the Kirchhoff's junction rule, by the way, we have the I total equals the I1 plus I2 plus up to I n, okay. N elements, okay, I, I n resistors. So in 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 here we have okay, we have um, I one equals I two plus I three. If we have the electricity passing um, here, okay, so we have the electricity passing through this location. This this so it, when it, it reaches this this junction okay the electricity will flow uh here and also here we we'll return now to figure two where we have shown the difference between the direct and the alternating current because we are now on the topic of alternating current and we see how the alternating current forms that of a sinusoidal wave, okay? Very unlike that of the direct current, which has constant voltage, because we have here the, the uh, in the y-axis, the I and V, okay? So this is because of the varying polarity of the, no, the, the alternating current is because of the alternating or the changing or the varying polarity of the poles of the AC. Uh, the AC generator exactly. Now uh, we have what uh, him here shown two cycles of a an AC wave, okay, and halfway through the cycle, the polarity changes. So the the one one end, it, you remember the poles. One pole becomes one original one one pole is originally positive, and halfway through it becomes negative. So that is one cycle, okay, uh, shown over here. And then another cycle goes, it, it, it returns, okay, it goes back so that uh, the, the polarity now is reversed. So this is not actually an instantaneous reversal. So the, the, the polarity is actually from zero, okay, so the, the, the zero to 180 degrees, it's, 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 uh, instantaneous, so it, it's continuous. That's why we have here uh, a, a sinusoidal wave, because if it's uh, instant, there's no change in, in, in there's an instant change in polarity to be something like this. But we instead have a chart that is sinusoidal. Okay, that means the the change in the or the reversal of the polarity is instantaneous. Now we have the equations for voltage and current okay, following the sine waveform. And this is represented in equation six and seven. Okay. Uh, for the first equation, number six, we have the AC voltage through time. Uh, again, this is instantaneous. So we represent it by small v. The v sub zero and v i sub zero are the peak voltage and current respectively. So this is the peak. Uh, I and V, 
And so this is the crest value okay, of the wave waveform. The negative of these values is the trough okay, of torsion. Now we have talked about the voltage and current sources, and now we talk about uh, we now talk about the other circuit elements. So we've also talked about the resist resistors. Now there are uh, inductors and then capacitors. Okay, these are two the two other most common uh, circuit elements, and which we're going to make use of in this discussion. Uh, okay, so these two circuit elements are responsible for the phenomena of inductance and capacitance. Now, uh, they're very important also in AC circuits, as you will see here. Uh, you have the commercially available um, inductors and also the capacitors on the other side. So, in a circuit, the conductors store. Uh, electrical energy flowing through uh, its coils of wire, okay? And it stores, okay, in its coils. The usual um, use are in um, oh, sorry, I, I was referring to capacitors. So capacitors, they store energy in their coils. Um, oh, sorry, uh, inductors. So they have, they have the inductors uh, storing in their coils. So uh, they have, um, well, the wave nature, okay? We have the wave nature of electricity. Um, it's electromagnetic. So we have, um, when, when there's a coil, there's a, a shifting of the magnetism, okay? In, 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 a, uh, in a form that is, well, not seen, but by the eyes. But it allows for the shifting of the uh, magnetic uh, magnetic wave portion. So this, the use of uh, inductors are in mechanical relays, a uh, transformers, and also motor and generator windings. It allows for the rotation of an electric motor. Okay. Capacitors on the other hand, they store the charges in their uh, in their in their uh, uh, body. Okay. So that the uh, there's a, a charge at a certain point, and when uh, this this is cut off, okay, it releases or the the source of uh, voltage is cut off. It releases this, or once there's a trigger, okay, it can release a certain uh, flash of energy from this uh, storage of ener uh, energy of of charges, okay, energy in the form of charges. And these are uh, have been used in um, flash of flashes of cameras. All right, again, um, we have inductance, and it's represented by uh, the letter L, but with uh, the unit in Henry or H. And again, it's just the the phenomenon of the magnetic field. Uh, changing in direction because of um, the electric charge okay, and the electric, electromagnetic nature, wave nature of, of the, the flow of electricity. Okay. So this is in, in actually in uh, Faraday's law. Okay. You have to recall the magnetic flux in magnets and these allows the, um, the Magnetic field to change in 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 orientation, okay, because of the uh, coiled wires. So it is the variation of inducting current of a unit of ampere per second producing a volt, and that is in Henry. Now capacitance is the the phenomenon of the storing of charges again in. You have uh, actually two insulated plates in the body of a capacitor, and uh, there's a there's a gap between them so that the electricity or the charges could not move, but they're so close so that they can feel the the attraction. 
but there's a there's a a, a they're, they're being being barred from uh, connecting with each other. So okay, that is that is allowing the um the storage of electricity per volt of uh, potential difference across the capacitor plates. And the unit of the capacitance is in Farad. All right, in the next uh, discussion, we uh, go to um, some computations using, um, using the uh, Ohm's law and uh, Kirchhoff's uh, laws. You have here our references and our credits for the um, media and information used. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next lecture.